Welcome in, hockey fans in the desert southwest. It's another Pitchfork Profile. I've got a senior with me. i got Brett Gruber, the Appleton, Wisconsin native. I mentioned to you off-camera, Brett, first of all, thanks for stepping in. Of course. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, I mentioned to you, I said, uh, is it sunk in yet, right? The, uh, the senior year is uh, getting close to an end, and, and you told me what? I just, I, it hasn't really sunk in yet. I'm kind of putting it off, like you said, and it's really sad, but it's just, it makes me just want to get to that national tournament even more and really dial it in these last couple of weeks, so. You know, when I talk to seniors, I always like to uh, reflect a little bit, so let's reflect back to your first trip to Oceanside Ice Arena and your recruiting trip, maybe, or wherever it was. Tell me what it was like. Yeah, I mean, it was different. Uh, like, I had no idea what to expect, but um, at first, I'll be honest, like, I was like, oh, man, like, we're playing in this rink. But uh, as, as my four years have gone on, I've gotten accustomed to it, and now I enjoy playing here, and we're doing a really good, a really good job at home these past few years, and I think it's been an advantage for us. You know, a lot of guys will look, and a lot of teams will look, and they'll go, like, making an NCAA tournament is not an easy thing, right? right. 60 teams, but only 16 spots. You guys are facing the opportunity of getting there twice in your two of your four years here. Right. How big of a deal is that? Oh, it's, a, it's a huge deal. I mean, I think I, everyone has the same goal as to win a national title. And um, I just think that we've, we've kind of stayed the course and listened to our coaching staff and kind of believed in each other. And I think our locker room is one of the closest locker rooms in the NCAA and we all hang out together and that's what makes us so great. And I think that we just bring it every single night and we've just gotten better and better in the year, as the year's gone on. You know, I think back a couple different things. We started the season in July this year before you went right. to China and Brinson stood in front of the media and said, I'm not going to be satisfied unless we win a national championship this year. Yeah. And we all looked at him like, are you serious? <laughs> what was the thought in the locker room when he says that? Oh, I mean, I think it's, he's just saying what everyone else is thinking. Like, yeah. everyone has the same goal, and I, I think we believe in ourselves. And now that we've been there and gotten our feet wet with the national tournament, uh, we're, not, we're not just satisfied to get there now. We want to get there and go the distance. So I think there's a whole different, whole different thought process going into the tournament if, we may, if we're lucky enough to make it. And I think that if we, if we can continue to play the way we're playing, we're going to have a really good shot. You know, when you look at what you've done, you know, 21 win season last year, and you have a chance to better that this year, six games to go as we talk, and you see all these things mounting up, and they're just little things, and I'm sure you'll look back at them at the end of your career and go like, wow, this is quite an accomplishment, but in the moment, is it just about winning hockey games? In the moment, yeah, it's just about winning hockey games. Like, I, I don't, like, it's crazy. You know, we'll, win a, we'll win a couple of games, and it's out the, out the window already, so I'm already looking forward to the next weekend after we win those games, and um, yeah, like I'm sure I'll, after my career, I'll look back and say, "Wow, we really, we really did something special here." And but as of right now, we're just focused on winning one game at a time and week to week, and hopefully getting into the national tournament. I'm sure when you came to Arizona State, you were thinking like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm a part of a, a program, a building program. It's going to be a successful program." But you look at some of the guys that left in front of you, and I'm thinking of uh, Holsey and, and Crow last year, and now I'm looking at what you and Steen are doing, especially on the penalty kill and in big moments. What did you learn from those guys that have prepared you for this moment? Well, I think just learning from those guys, like they just kept their heads down and worked, and they, they, I'm just one thing I definitely took out of their books is they were a great teammate to everyone, and I think that's one of the biggest thing I'm biggest things I'm trying to focus on is just being a good teammate to every single person and showing up to work every day and um, just bringing a hard work ethic and so that people can follow that lead. And I think that's one of the biggest things is as long as we can show up to work every day with a hard working attitude, we're going to go pretty far this year. You know, I look at your team on the ice and I look at big moments, right? When there's a big draw on a close situation, coach looks to you right away. Do you, do you like those? Do you cherish those moments? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I love, I, I, I love being in the moment and I, every single one that opportunity, uh, every single opportunity that I can be in, I, I'd like to be in. So um, I look forward to those moments and I like to try and take advantage of them whenever I can. Let's talk about the face-off circle. How much do you love being in the face-off circle, especially in big moments? Yeah, I love it. Uh, I think it's one thing that I've always, I've always taken pride in as a little battle that I can do every single time I'm on the ice and there's a face-off. And um, I, put, I think I put a lot of emphasis on it in my game, and I think that winning draws is actually a bigger part than people think. And yeah. having possession right off the start like that is really helpful, especially on the PK, and getting that clear right away is, is a big aspect into our success. And I think all of our centermen are doing a really good job with that. You know, about three weeks ago, you were in Brown, and you came back from a 3-0 deficit, and you won. And, and I 
I told people I started a new hashtag, right? It's called New Gear because yeah. I think you guys have found a new gear. Yeah. And I'll touch back to early in the season. I asked Coach Powers. I said, "How how much is the potential on this team? How far can they go?" And he said, "Oh, we're not even halfway there." And then. Um, month two months ago he told me uh maybe 50 60 percent i go really and now this new gear that you guys have found you showed me again last weekend you cranked it up and scored four goals just like that yeah. is that a gear that you guys have found or has it always been there and it's just starting to show itself now no i think i, I think it <clears throat> it's always been there we just haven't shown it yet and um the one thing I really like about our team is <clears throat> now that we, I feel like we've found a way to win in every situation. Like we've been able to hang on to leads, we've been able to come from behind, we've been able to be tied and found a way to win. So I think that's one of the biggest things in championship level teams is they find a way to win in all facets of the game. So it's really nice to see us do that. You know, I'm going to look back last year to the national tournament when you went there. You had a long period off, a lot of guys healed up and you got a little better, but you still played um, a game that uh, I don't know. I mean, other teams have been playing right up to it, right? right? Is that difficult to get over a long stretch time off and then get competitive again? There, yeah, I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult in the sense that we don't play any games for so long, but it's yeah. also it's also nice because we get to rest a little bit, and like teams have to play that full stretch, and sometimes their legs will be heavier than ours. So I think there's pros and cons to both of it, but. Sure. Um, I think since we're returning so many guys that we're, we're going to approach it in a different way and we're going to know what to expect and I think we'll be coming in there more prepared than last year. You know, last year I think Quinnipiac was wishing that there would not be 10 more minutes left in the game because I think you guys are coming on right. and may have caught them and passed them and won that game. Yeah. What do you do differently if you get into that situation again this year? Well, the, the good thing is, is now like we, we've all been there and except for the freshmen, but um, like we, we just know, especially with this team, we, we know that any deficit is not safe against us. And I think that if we ever get in a hole, no matter what game it is, like we always have that same belief in the locker room that we can win this game. And it doesn't matter if it's three or four goals or one or two. Like I think, I think we all think the same thing, that we're going to win this game. All right, we're going to wrap it up with a little reminiscence, and then we're going to look forward. So the reminiscing part of it. Tell me a little bit about growing up in Appleton, Wisconsin, and playing hockey and what it was like and, and how you developed the love for this game. Uh, well, my dad, my dad got me started when I was two years old. He played college hockey at Yale University, and right. um, so I got into that. I, I got into it there, and then I just remember – like sitting in the living room, my mom would play goalie for me and I'd be shooting like little balls at her and I just, I absolutely love the game and I'd watch every single, I used to be a Dallas Stars fan, my Padano right. fan, so I used to watch every single game with my jersey on, like as close as I could be to the TV and so I think my love for it just grew there and then just the relationships I've created over the years and I think that's one of the greatest things about hockey is you create friends for life and um, I've just loved every second of it. Okay, so you, you grew up playing youth hockey, moved all the way up the ladder, then you played some junior hockey. Tell me the similarities between junior hockey and, and NCAA. Um, I, w I would say that there, there are some similarities, but I think once you get to the NCAA, there, there's no bad players. Um, right. and, right. and junior, sometimes you run into, like, maybe, like, not necessarily bad players, but just not as high caliber. Yeah. But every single team you play, there's – great players and so you can't like in juniors sometimes if you take nights off you can find a way to win but in in college hockey if you take a night off you're not going to win that game so I think that's the biggest difference but um, the skill levels like there's guys in the USHL that I played in and then the BCHL that could easily play in the college right now just because they're so skilled so it's good to see that there's not that big of a gap between the two. Okay, so you guys are wrapping up six weeks left we, lo we want to look forward so tell me a little bit about what you're doing uh in the classroom, what do you want to do after the hockey ends for you, whenever that is? Yeah. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a management major, and so I'm just just I got three classes left. So looking forward <laughs> for that to be done with. But um, I, I would love to do something in managing or in the business world, and I'm not entirely sure what exactly I want to do with that yet. But. Um, I, oh, hopefully something works out, so I'm, I'm sure I'll be okay. I can tell in the look in your eyes that like, you're not ready to end hockey no, anytime soon, no, are you? No, no, no. I'm hoping to play next year, and uh, hopefully, I'm, not, I'm honestly, I'm just worried about making the national tournament right now. So I just think that if we can just keep playing the way we will, then we'll be just fine. Okay, final question for you. As we go through the whole thing, we look back. Started in China in July, right? Yeah. Moved all the way through. Then you ended up on the streak of th 13 straight weeks of hockey. Yeah. What's it been like in your body for 13 straight weeks? Well, we're lucky enough to have people like Leanne and CJ who, um, 
who really take care of our bodies and know and listen to us and they, they're always willing to help us stretch and try and get us the right treatment so that our bodies are able to get through these tough times and um, the coaches even too like we'll, we'll shorten up our practices a little bit and make it easier on our legs so I think we have a great staff who's allowed us to have our legs every single night during the stretch just because they're so listening and that really helps us out a lot. All right, Brett Gruber, the senior.